away from the limelight, sitting in a corner, is a car that deserves your attention. It's Swedish, it's good looking and it's thoroughly impressive. You just don't notice it that much. Which is kind of weird considering it's massive. So this is the Volvo XC90 and it's living proof that size does not necessarily have to be proportionate to voice. Oh, by the way, there are going to be lots of size references in this video, so just brace yourself. For instance, the XC90 is so big that its belt size is equator. Anyway, there are lots of deeply impressive things about the XC90 that you should know. So let's get on with it. For a start, it's not about the safety features. Yes, those are there, it is a Volvo after all, but one of the most impressive things is that there's a simple humdrum 2-litre petrol engine buzzing away under the bonnet. Now, the size isn't the impressive thing, it's the output. It puts out a mystifying 300 horsepower and 420 Nm. At this point, you're probably wondering whether a tiny 2-litre petrol motor is enough to haul something as big as the XC90. And you can probably stop wondering because the XC90, it's an anomaly. And what I mean by that is that it has three systems to actually help boost engine performance. So there's a turbocharger, there's a supercharger, and on top of that, there's also an electric boost, courtesy the hybrid system's e-motor. The results are instantaneous. Initial pickup is so lively, a small poke of the throttle and you're off with the sprightliness of a hatchback almost. Thereafter, it's a strong linear pull across the rev range. At no point does it feel anchored down, almost burdened by the weight of the XC90. Which it honestly should because this car is humongous. The decision to pack in a turbocharger, supercharger and some lovely electric boost has paid off handsomely. The XC90 also gets drive modes, so there's Eco, there's uh, Dynamic, there's Comfort. There's also this thing called Individual, which is essentially a mix and match of your favorite, whatever you want, basically. How you want to set the car up, you can use that. There's also Off-Road, although I haven't really used Off-Road yet, unless Bombay Roads count. Mm, yeah, I don't think so. Anyway, the interesting thing about the Off-Road mode is that it raises your ground clearance to 252 mm. And that's more than you need to tackle pretty much anything. As for the gearbox, it is thoroughly refined. For the most part, it never skips a beat and so you never really understand that it's working away under there. The only time you really sense it trying to make up its mind is when you hurry it, like for a quick overtake maybe. I do wish this had the option of paddle shifters behind the wheel, that would have made it a bit more decisive when you're hurrying it along. Another standout bit about the XC90 is the ride. 95% of the time, it's like driving on a bed of pillows. You show it an undulation and it will smother it beyond belief. Of course, the handling is pretty good as well. I mean, I'm surprised by how well it handles. It's, it's, of course, you push it too hard into a corner, it will roll, it will get a little bit out of control, but if you keep it at sane speeds, it's perfectly good. All this while you sit in a cabin that's understated and elegant. I will point out here that it's not as, say, flashy as some of its competitors, but what it misses out on, well, being loud, it more than makes up in a lot of ways. Like the seats are incredibly comfortable. The fronts even get a cooling and massage function which can be toggled via the touchscreen in the middle and that's always a nice thing to have.
What I really wish though was that Volvo didn't skimp out on a couple of features that would have made a great value add to the entire car. For instance, uh, there's wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. That would have made a big difference. And on top of that, I wish there were a few more physical buttons anywhere all along here. Right now, everything of value has to be controlled via the touchscreen. And let's just say the touchscreen conks. What do you do then? It can get a little bit annoying sometimes. That said, it does not skimp on the features that you should have in a car like this. So, for instance, there's a head-up display, there's cooled and massaged seats, there's a 19-speaker Bowers and Wilkins sound system, there's wireless charging, the works essentially. Then, of course, there's safety features. And this being a Volvo, there's no dearth of them. There's a 360 camera, city safety, pilot assist, lane keeping aid, adaptive cruise control, park assist, cross traffic alert, blind spot notification, rear, you get the gist. After all this, I can see why the XC90 gets overlooked among the competition. Unfortunately, it just lacks that shock value that we, well, value when we're buying something that's this expensive. Which is honestly a bit of a pity because this is one really impressive SUV. Anyway, thank you for watching. This is Forbes Indie Momentum. I'm Ronak and if you're moving houses, holler because I clearly have a lot of space. <laughs> <laughs>